All right, now let's see how we can deploy this application to an Android device. Now, if you're an iPhone user, I still want you to watch this video to the very end because it will help you better understand how this whole deployment process works. Now for Android, first you need to install Android Studio on your machine. So simply head over to developer.android.com slash studio. All right, back in our project. So here we have a folder called platforms. And under that, we have iOS, which is basically a standard Xcode project that is automatically generated by Ionic CLI. So when we created this project, Ionic CLI automatically added iOS as a platform. You can also see we have platforms.json, which shows currently we have only iOS as a platform. Now back in the terminal, I'm gonna run Ionic platform at Android. And this is going to generate an Android project written with Java that includes our web application. Now you can see in platforms.json, we have an entry for Android. We also have an Android folder under platforms. Again, this is a standard Android project implemented with Java. Now, what is important here is that you should not modify the code inside this Android or iOS project because these are automatically generated by Ionic CLI. And if you look at this .git ignore file, you can see that platforms folder is excluded from repository, which means if you're part of a team, every time someone checks out this project from Git, they have to run Ionic platform at Android. And again, a new Android project is going to be automatically generated. So for this reason, if you're going to customize this project and write some specific code, because it's not going to be checked into the repository, other developers in the team are not going to have access to your code. This is a key thing I want you to remember. Now, back in our project, under platforms, Android, assets, we have dub, dub, dub again. So this is our web application that is built with Webpack. So as I explained earlier in the section, this Android or iOS app is essentially a browser shell that hosts this web application. Now let's run this in an Android emulator. Here in Android Studio, I'm gonna to go to open an existing Android Studio project and then browse to our project folder. And then under platforms, Android. Okay. All right, now in Android Studio on the left side, go to the project tab and select the Android project here. Now on the toolbar, click this play icon. In this dialog, you need to select the deployment target. You can see on my machine, I have three virtual devices. Now on your machine, you may have zero or you may have more. If you don't have any virtual devices, simply click this button, create new virtual device. On this page, you see various Android phones, their sizes, their resolutions, and their density. So simply go ahead with this wizard and create a new virtual device. And then it will appear here. Now, if you have an Android phone, you can connect it with USB and you will see that under connected devices. So now I'm gonna go ahead with Nexus 5 API 23. Okay, this is going to build our application. And now we have an Android emulator running our application. But let me show you an easier way to run your application in an Android emulator or a real device. Back in the terminal, in the last lecture, you learned about Ionic Surf, which basically builds our application and deploys it to a local web server. We have another command, Ionic run Android. And this will build and deploy our application to a real Android device connected via USB. Now, if you don't have an Android phone, this will launch your application in an Android emulator. But of course, that requires you to have an Android emulator on your machine. So if you don't have one, you can simply come back to this dialog and create an Android virtual device. Now, when running our application in terminal, we can pass dash L flag. This stands for live reload. So this will launch our application in an emulator. And as we modify the source code, it will automatically build it and redeploy it to an Android emulator or a real device. We also have C, which stands for console. 
So anytime we use console.log in our application, we can see those messages here in terminal. Now let's see this in action. So we can see Webpack is building our application. Okay, here's our emulator. Now back in the project, I'm gonna to go to source, pages, home.html, delete everything inside ion-content element, and simply add a button here. Next, we need to add an attribute, ion-button. Click me. And now let's handle the click event. So this is just basic Angular. Save. Now let's go to home.ts, which is the component behind this template, and implement the click method. And then we add console.log button was clicked. Save. Now we can see Ionic CLI was watching for changes. It rebuilt our application and it also redeployed it in our Angular emulator. Now, when we click this button, we should see a message here in terminal, but for some reason, this is not working on my machine for Android. If I run this application in an iOS simulator, I can see console.log messages here in terminal. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next lecture.